The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the Cobra Engineering and Cruiser Customizing webinar talking about motorcycle exhaust systems, full systems, slip-ons, air kits, and fuel management. We're thankful that you took the time out of your Sunday evening to join us here at this webinar. Um, my name is Kyle Bradshaw, and I'm the product promotions and installation expert here at Cruiser Customizing. Now, once again, this is a co-branded webinar. Cameron will be on the line with us today. He will be the gentleman who will be representing Cobra Engineering. Cameron, welcome. Uh, can you give the audience a few sentences about who you are and kind of what you do? Sure. Uh, thanks, Kyle. I am the director of marketing and sales for Cobra Engineering. I've been with the company for uh, officially for 10 years, but back in a previous life, I was an editor of Cycle World magazine, and I helped Cobra write their original marketing materials for um, their cruiser exhaust systems back in 1992 uh, and 93. So I have a long, long association with the, the company and and the products. So um, it goes goes back that far. But officially, I've just been with these guys since 2003. Fantastic. And also exciting is the fact that Cobra was the company that we used to kick off this nine-day promotion, if you will, last year. And uh, we saw some significant um, traffic from that. So once again, we're happy that Cobra's here with us today. In the background or behind the scenes, we've got Jason Tolentino. He is one of our marketing specialists here at Cruiser Customizing. He is an avid runner, um, just recently committed the M or committed completed the MSF safety course and got his motorcycle license. Jason, could you uh, say a few words about your role here at Cruiser? Well, sure. So pretty much I do all the marketing here. I did generalized marketing, all the emails, all the, the creatives that you guys see. Um, I'm still trying to save up for my sport bike. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be saying that here, but uh, um, I've been trying to get a bike, so in the next few months I'll probably get one. And, you know, I just hope it all goes well. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So if you guys have seen the, the buying guides that we put out the last couple weeks in your weekly specials, I usually create the content. It then gets edited, and then Jason puts it together with creative up on the web page. So good job. Thanks, Jason. So throughout the day, we're going to be launching a poll, some or, you know, various poll questions. This one here is, what do you ride? Whether it be Metric, Harley, Victory, Triumph, Gold. And you want to get an idea of kind of who we're talking to. Um, so Jason will pop a poll question. Jason, if you could do that for us, please. There it is. This is kind of what your poll question is going to look like. Then uh, you can go ahead and make your selection, and then once we get enough uh, uh, responses there, Jason's going to go ahead and show us what the results are. Um, so this is kind of an interesting question because if you if we would have asked webinar attendees several years ago, if we would have been doing webinars, we probably would have had a 90% metric attendance. And more and more we're seeing that that shift to Harley-Davidson. We've been doing a big push on uh, being able to cater better to the Harley riders. And last webinar we had a um, 60 metric, 40 Harley-Davidson is pretty much what it came out to be. What's our percentage looking like, Jason? Wow, it looks like you're getting your stats right there, Carl. Um, it looks like 19% Harley, 80% Metric, 3% Victory, 0% Triumph, and 2% Goldwing. Let me close that poll out for you, and let me share the zero, share the results on the screen. Beautiful. All right, now let's get back to the webinar. Excellent. So that's going to give us an idea so we can talk a little bit, uh, cater to those who are in attendance. So today we're going to be talking about why exhaust pipes are important. We're going to talk about the difference between full systems and slip-ons, how exhaust pipes are made, um, how to get the most power out of your bike or exhaust pipe, and then we're going to have a giveaway. Cobra has offered to give away a slip-on exhaust pipe to one of the winners here tonight, and then we have a special offer for you guys. And then my favorite part should excuse me, is the question and answer section where you guys get to ask questions to Cameron and myself and we will do our best to answer those questions. So before we dig in here, we have one more poll question. And that's going to be, I'm currently running a stocker OEM exhaust, an aftermarket slip-on exhaust, or a full system 
exhaust. And the poll is up now currently. So Cameron, um, with your vast knowledge and experience here in the motorcycle industry over the last lots of years, what do you think is going to be our um, percentage here on these three options? Well, I think it's going to be different based on the bike they're riding. I think if for the Harley guys, I, my guess is we're going to see a lot more slip-on systems. On the metric guys, you're going to see a lot more full systems. That, mm -hmm. That's how I would see it breaking down. Interesting. Okay. And there's, there's, a, there's a reason for that as well. We can talk about that when we get into it a little more. Fantastic. What do you look like, Brian? Sorry. Jason. You mean Jason? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like 72% stock or OEM, OEM exhaust. And then we've got 13% aftermarket slip-on exhaust. And we have 16% aftermarket full system. And let me share that screen with you guys. There you go. Interesting. Well, this is pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting that the majority of the attendees today are riding with stock exhaust because there is a lot of improvement that we can do over stock. So an aftermarket exhaust pipe. Cameron, in your words, why would somebody want to put an aftermarket pipe on their motorcycle, specifically a Cobra pipe? Well, we at Cobra, we used to participate in what, what was they used to be called the Cycle World uh, Motorcycle Shows, the shows that went all around the country starting in November through February, and they'd hit all the, the, the major cities. And we did giveaway. We gave away probably seven or eight motorcycles during the course of that. And we all to, to enter the giveaway, you had to fill out a survey. And every year, it always came back exactly the same. We would ask this same question, what are you looking for? And it was the number one answer was always sound. They wanted sound first. The second most important thing was how it looked. Performance really was a third option, wow. and that that always was a surprise to us because, you know, being a lifelong motorcyclist, I was always looking for performance. How can I get my bike to make a little more power, a little more torque? And the other pieces weren't as important to me, but. When it, and when it came to the majority of customers, it really was, what does it sound like? What does it look like? And do I get a little more performance? And, and I always find that, that really interesting because when you talk to riders, they all talk performance, how I want to make more horsepower. But when it comes time to make the purchase decision, it's how does it sound? And that's where the, an aftermarket system really can make a considerable difference um, with with their exhaust systems. And the developments that are happening now, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get to this, with the technologies that are available and uh, the machinery that's available, we can make systems now that are so much more sophisticated and we can tune the sound a lot more for individual bikes. Uh, and that's what's really exciting from a manufacturer's perspective. We can do things today that four years ago we just couldn't do because the materials were too expensive, um, or the machinery to make the precision parts was so astronomically expensive, no one could afford it. So those changes are, are kind of leading a, a technological change in the aftermarket exhaust systems as well. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I walked through the Cobra factory uh, a couple years ago, and then I had an opportunity to revisit it. Um, I want to say it was January, February time frame when I came down, and Dustin took me through the, through the factory as we were looking at how the... Uh, the new um, Goldwing pipe was made. The new swedge machine that you guys have is pretty fantastic. It's pretty neat. That thing's pretty cool, and we our guys built that our built that ourselves. What you miss is now we have the latest generation robotic welders that um, are doing things that you know. There have been robotic welders for a long time in automotive and even motorcycle aftermarket guys, but the latest generation of those things allow us to do some things that are pretty unbelievable. And that allows us to make systems that look different, sound different, and perform better than ever before. Just, just by having that technology available and with the computer programming that we can do to do it, you can, it just opens up your creativity of what you can do. And those F6B pipes are just the start of that. It's fantastic. Now, when we talk about exhaust pipes, we've got the slip-on mufflers and we've got the full system exhaust. And from most manufacturers out there, the performance increase for a slip-on ranges three to five percent or so. 
And then some people claim that you know a full system properly tuned with air and fuel can get you up to 10, 15, or even 20 percent, depending on how much air you allow into the motorcycle. Um, if you were going to use your professional background to talk a little about slip-on and full system, what, what do you see are the differences? Well, a, a full system allows you to tune the motorcycle a, a lot better. And let's just, you know, you've got a picture of a, a street light up there. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, and this is for, you know, general purposes, but on, on a stock Harley, if you use the, the stock head pipes, the catalytic converter is in the head pipe. And, and that's restrictive, and it's there to help with emissions and, and control all that. But you can only do so much. Uh, in terms of power, you can put a good pair of uh, a good set of slip-on mufflers on there, and um, you can gain anywhere on that particular motorcycle with a 103-inch motor anywhere from four to six horsepower, depending on the slip-on, whether it's Cobra or Vance and Hines or one of the other guys that make a good good exhaust system. But when you replace the stock head pipes with an aftermarket head pipe then you, you can tune the motorcycle to a higher state of tune. You can put more air in there. So you can really go from, from making, say, four or five horsepower to easily getting 12 horsepower with a good combination of, of air intake, fuel tuning, head pipes, and mufflers. So that gives you more power. It gives you more uh, torque as well. And when you're talking about a motorcycle that makes around 70 horsepower, if you can get another, um, you know, 10, 10 horsepower, that makes a big difference. So that's really where you see um, the advantage of a full system. It just allows you to, to tune it more precisely and to get the most performance out of that, that engine that you can get using bolt-on parts. Fantastic. Yeah, really the, the main reason that you would go with the full system is to be able to get a little bit more power and to be able to allow you to tune the motorcycle more appropriately, like Cameron was saying. Being able to eliminate the catalytic converter or anything that's blocking airflow is definitely key. Um, so let's roll through yeah, real quick. And, 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 and before, before we move on, Kyle, I think it's important to, to just say, if for the guys who are from California, you know, you'll, if you looked at any of the manufacturer's websites, you'll see that um, because of all of the exhaust companies trying to become compliant with the California Air Resources Board, most of your slip-ons can be considered replacement parts as long as they're not replacing a catalytic converter. Um, if you remove anything that has a catalytic converter in it, then that's a different different situation. For the 49 state guys, it's a different, you know, it's a different reality right now. But for California guys, you should keep in mind that uh, you don't want to be doing anything with the catalytic converters or um, you know, that could lead to some issues down the road. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, we've, we've been hearing here in California that we're going to be required to take our motorcycles to small check stations and have them uh, inspected, but that definitely hasn't been reality as of yet. We'll yeah, it's, it's a changing dynamic in, in California, so it's, you know, you just got to kind of think about that. And, and you go to the Cobra website and, or Vance and Hines or Yoshimura or any of the good companies, you'll see a, a button on there for California customers, and it will explain you know, in great detail of, of the situation in California and, and how to make sure that you are, are doing the correct thing. Absolutely. Thank you, Cameron. So now we're going to roll through a little bit of how exhaust pipes are made. And essentially, there's two main components, um, at least that's what I saw when I walked to the factories. Basically, you have Things are made of flat stock or flat sheets of metal that are then cut and bent and, and, and swedged or whatever you want to call it. And then you have the round stock. You have the, the round tubing that's then you know, cut to length and then bent and, and, and played with that way. Um, what are some of the other things that you've got there on the shop camera that, that help make exhaust pipes? Well, the, the most important thing is the brain power. Because, you know, a lot of people don't think about that, but if you look at a motorcycle, the great thing about a motorcycle is you see the exhaust system. So the very first thing is it has to look great. 
So the guys who are doing the designing have to have a sense of style and a sense of design because every manufacturer starts at the same place and we kind of end at the same place. But how you get there in between is what makes you unique and attractive. So really the, the, the piece that's most important is to make sure you have good designers and, and good R&D guys who can start at the, the head pipe, make the thing look right, and fit and have everything in perspective, but then also perform well. So it, it really starts there. Um, and then when you get to the fabrication point, as Kyle's pointed out, we're talking, you know, tube, and, and we bend tube, and we um, have all the machines that do that. But there are certain things that you can do to, to uh, streamline that process. There's an interesting thing. If you look at that top middle photo, um, the gentleman there is using a plasma cutter to cut a heat shield. That's basically we, we take a, a, a big round piece of tube, bend it the proper shape, and then cut out the back so it slips over the real exhaust pipe under there. It's kind of a neat technology when you see it happening. And we've automated that, but we still have a lot of hand work where guys are actually making those pieces. So that's, that's kind of uh, you know, an interesting piece. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner, that's a gentleman working on the bender. So he's putting in a straight piece of tube, and then it's all programmed to put in the correct bends and angles for all of that. So all of those pieces come together to make your, make your piece. Um, and then the cores that you see, oh, it went too fast, down in the bottom right-hand corner. That's where, that's how you get the sound you want. It's the, the pattern of the, the cores, the type of holes that are there, whether they're curved round holes or they're louvered cores, but you can change in the, the tone and the sound of that, the volume even, by the pattern of them, how many there are, if, are they spread out, are they a tight coil, are they deep. So you kind of engineer and control the, your, your sound quality and your sound volume with how those cores are produced that slip inside the, uh, the muffler. Fantastic. Now, here on this screen here, we've got uh, on the right-hand side, we've got a lot of little components, you know, the, the collars and brackets and stuff like that. Um, kind of neat in the very center section. I was kind of impressed by this. So the big machine there at the bottom on the left takes flat pieces of steel and cuts out individual components. How fast does that machine work, Cameron? Well, not as fast as I would like it to, but um, <laughs> what it, it, that's, that's a laser cutter. And this is kind of an important thing. A couple companies use these. But if you look at the flanges that are in that lower right-hand corner, the, the laser cuts those out and even cuts the holes in them. So every one of those is perfect. Every one is exactly the same. Um, and all those, those things are done on the laser machine. It'll take a gigantic piece of steel and figure out how it can get the most yield out of those. And what I always like to say is, you know, if we get a call from a customer who says, you know, my flange doesn't fit. You know, we make tens and tens of thousands of these, and we go, if one doesn't fit, then we don't get worried. If ten guys call and they don't fit, then we know there's an issue there. But this thing continues to make perfect parts, not just exhaust parts, but uh, all of the brackets for every, every exhaust system we use is cut on this machine. Um, so it all starts there, and it's very precision-oriented, so, and everyone is exactly the same. I'd like it to work twice as fast as it does, though. <laughs> oh, the art of manufacturing, gotta love it. So on this on this slide here, we're looking at the exhaust pipes. You know, after they've come back from polish and chrome and they get inspected again, they then get wrapped in plastic, which then gets wrapped in newspaper and then put into boxes and shipped out to the distributors, which we are lucky enough to be able to purchase from. Um, can you talk a little bit about the quality control process, Cameron, and how that works? Sure, and I, I've, I've become more and more involved in that in the last, uh, last year myself, especially on the Harley product. But um, when stuff comes back from polish and plate, like Kyle said, you can see the stuff in the upper left-hand image. They're all laid out on these carpet-covered tables, and every piece, every muffler is inspected by... Um, the people who do the assembly, the final assembly. If they see anything that 
is suspect, they circle that, whether it's a, a ding, a dent, or a little pit, or whatever, and then the managers go out and inspect those. And then they either okay it or not. So every piece gets looked at um, when it comes back, when it gets checked in, it gets looked at before it gets packaged. And if there's any question, the manager will look at it. Now, this, the way that these are being packaged is one way that we do our exhausts. For other exhausts and the mufflers, we've switched to an entirely different kind of packaging. And uh, if any of the Harley guys have, have pulled out some of the boxes or slip-ons, and everything is um, packed in individual boxes that go into another master pack box that has uh, stuff on it. Just to prevent UPS, we call them universal package smashers, from destroying it. Because if you think about it, when we package this stuff up and you can see the boxes that are getting ready to go out, they get shipped to the distributor's warehouses. And then they get shipped to a dealer uh, or to Cruiser Customizing's uh, warehouse. And then they get shipped to the customers. So these things are moving three, four times, and the packaging and the boxes have to be robust enough to uh, take that kind of travel. And, and uh, they don't get treated with respect. If you've seen how a guy with a forklift will just kind of slam these into a truck or a UPS guy will throw them out, you know, the boxes have to, to protect these products. So when customers open them up, they're as perfect when they get them as when we put them in the box. And that's really a, a challenge sometimes. And that has an impact because the boxes and packaging have to be so heavy that increases the UPS uh, cost to it, but at least the packages get there without major dents from being just squashed. Sometimes you see them, you know, I'll ship stuff to a dealer, go to a dealer and, and open it up and I can't believe there's big holes in the boxes and other stuff. So we really try to protect that with extra wrapping of paper and bubble wrap and plastic just to make sure that everything gets there as, as perfect as can be. As someone who receives things in the mail all the time, I always Love it when the package comes through perfect. So let's talk a little bit about how you make the most power out of your motorcycle. Whether you're putting a slip on or a full system, or even if you're just running your bike with your stock pipes, having the correct air fuel mixture is absolutely key. Now, Cobra makes jackets, or they have jackets that they source for all of the carbureted motorcycles. And then they've got the FI2000, which has been out for several years now and has gone through lots of different iterations. And now we have the FI2000 Power Pro, which legitimately is the most technologically advanced fuel tuner on the market. Um, Cameron, I'm going to open the floor up to you to talk a little bit about fuel management and how Cobra is involved in that. Okay. Well, I, when, when motorcyclists want to make power, everybody thinks first of the exhaust system. And, and again, you, it's one of the things you see. You see and hear and you think, I need to... I want to make more power, so I've got to um, put a better exhaust system on. Well, a lot of really, times, real quick, really Cameron, a lot of times people equate power with sound. That's exactly right. If the motorcycle is quiet, it can't be powerful, versus if it's really loud like a dragster, then it must be creating lots of power, which is kind of a misconception, but uh, a lot of it just has to do with the amount of air fuel that you can get into the bike so it can actually use it. And that's that's exactly my point. It's, when you want to make power, you've got to get more air into the into the engine. And if you can put more air in there, you can add more fuel. Air and fuel is, makes the bang. You want a bigger bang, and the exhaust system helps scavenge those of spent gases. So the whole thing works as a system. So to make more power, as Kyle's put up here, you really have to be able to get more air into the the, the engine. Have have it tuned properly so the air-fuel ratio is where it should be, and then have a good exhaust system that pulls it out together. So it's really those three things working as a unit um, that will give you the most power and the most reliable power. And then when you get to the fuel, that's where the real magic is because, especially with the Power Pro, every time with that unit that you open the throttle and accelerate, it's checking its work. It's like We've put a dyno operator and a dyno into that tuner, and every time the engine fires um, and a squirt of fuel goes in, 
we add another squirt of fuel. And if it goes around the fires quicker, we add another one. So we keep adding, and if it slows down, we take it away. It does that on a, on a big V-twin about 80 times a second. So it's always making sure that it, it's producing the best air fuel ratio for that situation to give the bike the most horsepower it can. And so if things change, if the air density changes or the load on the bike changes, it's going to figure that out and, and adjust the fuel accordingly. It's, it's, the, real, it's the real science of, of this uh, little uh, triangle of power. Fantastic. Yeah, air fuel, I mean, having the proper air fuel ratio really makes your bike run properly, no matter what exhaust pipe you're running. Well, it's, you know, if you think about a full system, someone has spent anywhere from um, 600 to $1,000, depending on what system. You've spent another three or $400 for um, uh, additional air. So, you know, you want to make sure that the money that you spent, you optimize that by having the proper air fuel ratio at every every time you want to accelerate. So it really allows you to make the best use of the investment you've made in the exhaust system and the air intake side. Absolutely. So a lot of the questions that we get from uh, or concerns that we get when people call our customer care or send us emails is, can I do it myself? And we see time and time again that the step-by-step -step installation videos, whether it be a full system or a slip-on, can really change that fear or apprehension that people have. And be like, all right, I, I can definitely do this myself. Um, so here on the screen, I just created a, a really simple breakdown of, of how a slip-on is installed or how a full system is installed. Really, the slip-on, as you saw in, in yesterday's tip of the week, basically you unbolt the stock muffler, uh, remove it from the whatever mounting tabs it has, slide it off, slide the new one on, replace the fasteners or retighten all those fasteners, and that's pretty much it. Um, with the full system, you're going to have to go all the way up to the head of the motorcycle and you know, unbolt your, your, your um, uh, basically head bike clamp up there, remove those, and then uh, the, the new system would then either be assembled before it gets installed on the bike, depending on the system, or get put on piece by piece until the full thing's done. Now, one thing that we usually hear from time to time is, you know, they install it back on, they hear a ticking noise or some sort of uh, noise from the head pipe area. And that's usually caused because the crush gaskets that go between the head of the motorcycle and the head pipe flange uh, were not replaced when the system was uh, installed. Now, Cameron, we get questions often asking why the manufacturer doesn't, why the manufacturer of any aftermarket exhaust pipe doesn't include crush gaskets or head pipe gaskets with their pipes. Is there a reason you guys don't do that? Uh, well, for the most part, um, the crush gaskets can be reused. That's, that's the most common thing. And that also increases the cost of the system. Um, and since, 19, or well, since 2008, we're so concerned about the overall cost because of the impact of the economy. So we do everything we can to keep the cost affordable. And um, so that's, that's probably the main reason. For the most part, the crush gaskets are good for a, a couple of uses. But where we, have, where we run into issues with um, installation, and especially if, if they hear, if they think, get an air leak, is the position of the clamp on the slip-on body. That's, that's the most critical piece in the installation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people move the clamp too far back onto the muffler body and it won't really clamp down or crimp down. That where that muffler body slips onto the head pipe is designed with two or three slits so it can actually crimp and, and, and attach, squeeze down on, onto the head pipe. If that clamp is back a little bit too far, and we're talking, you know, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch too far, the clamp will never be able to tighten down enough and you'll get an air leak there and then you'll get backfiring. Right. And when it comes to the full systems, the one of the key tips that we say is don't tighten anything down. Put everything on, get it kind of loose and make sure everything's in the right position. And then tighten generally from the rear of the motorcycle forward. So, you know, when you don't don't tighten everything down at the 
at the uh, exhaust flange and then go tighten the next thing. You want to kind of get it all on there a little bit loose, you know, get everything finger tight, stand back and make sure that everything's in the right position. If you do that, for the most part, you'll end up with a good solid installation. And for us, the hardest part is removing the stock system. You know, because the bike, the bikes had the system on, it's gone through heat cycles, everything's kind of welded together. So, we always say WD-40 is your friend when it comes time to remove the stock system. You know, you can put that on uh, where, the, where the joints are, where the brackets are. You know, you just need some help sometimes loosening all that bracketry that comes on the stock bike. If it's been on there a few years, it's been through numerous heat cycles, rain, rust, road grime, whatever. So uh, you need to, you know, that's going to take you longer than, than it will to put on the full system. Yeah, that's one thing that we've done here at the shop. If we know that we're going to be working on a bike that's seen quite a bit of weather um, and we notice there's a little bit of rust around the joints, go ahead and hit each of the, uh, the head bolts and each of the um, uh, bracket where the bracket attaches to the motorcycle to the pipe. Just hit that a couple times, let it sit for several hours, come back again, hit it again, and then usually when you're ready to do that um, uh, disassembly, it goes much, much quicker. Oh, one thing before we move on, Kyle. Sure thing. Um, I know, I know there are a lot of guys out there, and I'm just like most of you guys. But one of the most important things you can do, even if it's just a slip-on or a full system, is read through the instructions first. <laughs> Our guys have gone through. They've done, you know, they've done the install. They've worked on the instructions, and some bikes have an unusual. Um, Installation, just by nature of the motorcycle, with some dynas in particular. You know, you have to follow the instructions because if, if you go like I do, I, and I've been around motorcycles my whole life, I know how to put an exhaust system on. Well, there's some peculiar things on individual motorcycles, and it might be that the sequence and how you tighten that is critical. So, do yourself a favor. Read through the instructions. for If you read through them, it's just standard stuff. Go ahead and burn them. But... Um, you might want to just ch check that out first to make sure that there's nothing peculiar about the, your bike and the installation of whatever system you're putting on. And that goes for, you know, I'm not just Cobra, but for any of the other guys, too. That, that, that's an important piece. And I know none of us want to do that. Absolutely. That's a great call, Cameron. Thank you for, uh, for opening people's eyes to that. So the next poll question here, Jason's going to go ahead and pop this for us. If you win tonight's giveaway, which is a slip-on exhaust from Cobra, will you install it yourself? Will you invite a friend to help you, or will you take it to a local shop? Hey, Kyle. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to, to uh, clarify this. Uh, it's not a slip-on muffler. We'll, we will give away any exhaust system from the Cobra catalog that the customer, the winning guy, wants. So okay. if it's a, if he wants a slip on or a full system, whatever, you know that 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 works for me. All right. Well, you guys heard it. Cobra has just sweetened the pot, so this is getting pretty exciting. What do we have for the answers there, Jason? All right. Great. It looks like everyone's looking at Carl's tip of the week. So <laughs> it looks like seventy-one percent <laughs> installed them yourself. So <laughs> probably could thank Carl with that. Fantastic. Fourteen um, percent invited friends to help you. And 15% take them to a local shop. So well, let me show that the results again on the screen. Beautiful. Well, I'm pretty excited at the number of people who are actually willing to uh, get their hands dirty and get these installed in their own garage just because there's so many things that, that the end user is afraid to do um, that just because they haven't had the experience themselves as of yet. But once you, once you get the opportunity to do that yourself, you really learn more about your motorcycle. You learn about it how it functions and why it does what it does and you know if you're riding down the road and something were to start to loosen up or or go wrong it allows you to understand oh well that might be this and you can go and you know, take a quick look at that and give it a wrench. It, you know what I think Kyle is <clears throat> as motorcycle guys we're more involved with the machine there's where there's more involvement in in how it rides you've got you know, right hand throttle, brake, clutch, both feet are involved, so you're more engaged and involved in the product. 
if you go buy a new car, you open the hood, what, you don't even see an engine anymore. You see all this plastic. So there's nothing you can do with your car. At least on a motorcycle, we can still get involved in, in very real, significant ways that mirror our experience when we ride the bike. You're so much more engaged in how to control it, how to turn, how to stop, how to slow down, how to accelerate. All of those things make it a more rewarding experience. And I think doing your own work as much as you can I mean, on a Goldwing, there's not a lot you can do except maybe a slip-on muffler, but for most of the rest of us, there's still a lot of stuff we can do on our bikes and we can do it ourselves. And with the quality of products that the industry makes these days, it's really a wonderful and rewarding thing to do. Absolutely. I totally agree with you, Cameron. So there, here are some top reasons that we, that we pulled out that, re, that people choose Cobra products when they choose exhaust pipes. Um, We've got a limited lifetime exhaust warranty. I'll let Cameron talk about that in just a minute. Definitely unmatched style and design. You guys see styles and designs from Cobra Engineering that nobody else is doing in the market. Cameron already mentioned the instructions. And, and the Cobra instructions that you guys get inside every box of exhaust pipes or sissy bar or light bar or whatever they've got are extremely detailed and, and you know almost the best in the industry. If you take a look at the product detail pages for any of the Cobra stuff on our website, there's actually the instructions that you can actually open up and it's a PDF. You can download those and you can print them off on your computer and have those at the side of the motorcycle if you have lost the ones that have come in the box. Installation for their products is pretty simple across the board. They've got excellent quality for their products and they've been made in the USA since the inception. Um, real quick, Cameron, can you talk a little bit about uh, the lifetime warranty you guys have for your products or for the bike? Sure, but I, I got to go back. I got to go back to the beginning <laughs> because um, that that's an important part of why we have this lifetime warranty. Um, Cobra Engineering started because our owner, Tim McCool, was some kid in high school who was making exhaust pipes in his mom and dad's garage. And he was a, he's a genius, uh, an exhaust genius. And he was welding pipes one day and burned down the garage. And his parents said, you've got to get out and you know, take this business somewhere else. If you raced motocross in Southern California in, in the 70s and you had an Elsinore 125, what you wanted was a T&M Engineering Elsinore. That was Tim McCool Engineering. He was the first guy who was able to to mass produce a rolled cone expansion chamber. Now some of the people listening will go, what's an expansion chamber and what's a rolled cone? Some of these guys will get it. But everybody knows companies like Pro Circuit. They know companies like FMF. They know companies like DG. And uh, Tim McCool made every exhaust pipe for those guys back in the beginning. So if, if you were in motocross in the 70s and 80s and you had a DG pipe or you had a Pro Circuit Pipe or an FMM pipe, FMF Pipe, that was made by Tim McCool. So his DNA goes back to the beginning of the explosion of, of, of motorcycling in, in the 70s and 80s in, in America. So that's carried over into how we build and design our pipes. What it came down to is we said, look, we already have a lifetime warranty. If a customer had a problem with an exhaust pipe, we would take care of it. And we just made it formal and said, we will cover anything but rust, surface rust, because we can't control how a guy might take care of his bike or wash it or not wash it or if he parks it at the beach and puts a cover on it. But the lifetime warranty was our way of saying, hey, as long as you own the bike and the exhaust pipe, if anything goes wrong, we'll take care of it. No questions asked. You know, well, we make you give us a receipt to make sure you didn't buy a used thing off eBay. But other than that, <laughs> we, we stand behind our product. And that's really a way of saying we believe in our product and the quality of it so much that we'll guarantee this thing for as long as you own it. And we thought five years ago that everybody in the business would follow us, but no one has. So we are still the only guys to offer a warranty like this. It's fantastic. Yeah, we deal with Cobra on a daily basis in, in the number of warranty claims that we've processed are almost nil. So good job to Cobra. Thank you. So now we're going to release our 24-hour special offer for all of you who have attended this webinar. It's basically two phases. The first phase, if you purchase 
any Cobra product. I don't care if it's a license plate frame or a reservoir cover, exhaust pipe, air kit, it doesn't matter. If you purchase a Cobra product, any Cobra product, in the next 24 hours, we'll send you a Cruiser Customizing t-shirt. Now, if that order is over $199, which most of the exhaust pipes, air kits, fuel managers, all of those things qualify, you will also receive a $30 gift certificate you can use on any future purchase. And that promo code is COB24. So again, COB24 is the promo code to get your t-shirt or your or, and your $30 gift certificate if your order is over $199. Now, we're just about ready to give away an exhaust pipe for a lucky winner. Now, of course, it says a little slip on pipes, but Cameron has so graciously sweetened the pot. So if you win tonight's exhaust giveaway, you're going to get your make, model, the motorcycle, and you'll get to choose your offering from Cobra Engineering. Jason, you are ready to pull that out for the winner? Yep. So everyone's names is actually in a, a cruiser customizing hat. <laughs> <laughs> so let me pull that out right now. Give me one second here. All right, and the winner is John Campbell. John Campbell, congratulations. You are the lucky winner of a Cobra exhaust pipe. John, are you there? Jason's now going to unmute you so you can come join us. I'm here if you can hear me. Hey, John, welcome to the webinar. Congratulations on your winning. Well, I just typed in, oh my God, I was in the chat, so <laughs> don't worry. Fantastic. What are you riding, John? It's a, believe it or not, it's a new to me 2009 Kawasaki uh, 1700 Classic LT. The guy that originally bought it apparently didn't ride it. Just sat in his garage for four years. And I picked it up over at Valley Cycle here in the mall places, Bakersfield, California. It only has 1,500 miles on it. Wow. Looks like a brand factory new, like just like the demos that you see on the internet from the from Kawasaki. It's not a scratch on it, it looks like brand new. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Congratulations on the on the new bike to you. It's fantastic. Is it currently running an aftermarket exhaust or stock exhaust? No, everything on it is uh, at this point stock, with the exception of a uh, fatty bar that's on it. There's a number of things I want to put on it. But uh, I do have some questions regarding this, and uh, uh, because you folks to mention California, and I was that was one of them I was going to address anyway. So thank you for that. Uh, the other in the tuning is the I've heard a lot with the mufflers. Uh, if you uh, mess this up, or if you attempt to change something out that's OEM, uh, there's a certain amount of back pressure created by the muffler that can throw off engine for tuning, and I'm wondering how that plays into this, or if it's even a real question in that regard. Well, it's definitely a real question, and uh, Cameron, the exhaust expert, can probably talk a little bit more to that. But if you're running an exhaust pipe that has any baffle at all, you're going to have enough back pressure for that motor to have what it needs. If you remove all of the baffling, essentially creating a straight pipe from the head all the way out, which has little to no restriction, you might run into an issue. Um, got a little expansion on that one for me, or Cameron? Well, that particular bike has, it, it, it has, a, uh, there are tuning issues with that particular bike that are difficult, because Kawasaki has some, um, air vacuum tubes and some other things where it's injecting fresh air back into the exhaust system. So there, there are some challenges with that particular, um, that particular engine. Is that that being said, that? there are ways to get around it. Would that be a California emissions issue or is that the bike design itself? That's the bike design itself, the way that they did it. When, the, when they uh, to, to get a, a cleaner emissions to pass their, to get the bike certified, they had to inject some air back in there. So there are some challenges with tuning that, especially when, and even stock, it's a little tough. When you put an aftermarket exhaust system on it, then it exacerbates that. So there are things you can do to kind of fix that, and, and uh, when you put 
whatever exhaust system you want on there, you can call our guys and they'll, they, they can walk you through how to, to get that work. But that particular engine is, is difficult to tune with aftermarket systems. The slip-ons aren't so bad, and we make these, for that particular one, we make a, it's, you can go to the website and check it out, but they're scallop tip slip-ons, and they're wonderful three and seven eighths, uh, or they're four, I, on those are four inches. And they've got this billet scallop tip that you can adjust and put in whatever position you want. And that doesn't make it quite so bad. When you put a full system on there, then it, it just, unfortunately, that particular motorcycle is difficult to tune. But we know that Cobra can do it. Yes, we can. <laughs> oh, by the way, Cameron, when you get to it, you can get reach out there in that slap pile. Uh, either that or you might want to edit uh, this video before you show the recording. Something about almost the best? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to brag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks, John, for joining us. If you could go ahead and shoot me an email with your contact information. No and problem. Then, uh, and then I will definitely work with Cameron, and we'll get, uh, we'll get your exhaust pipe out to you. Do you want me to just type it into the chat here? Um, actually, if you could just shoot me an email, kyle at cruisercustomizing.com, that would be uh, better. No problem. Thank you very awesome. much, Jim. I appreciate it. Thanks, John. You have a great Thanks, evening. John. So now we're going to open the floor up to question and answer time. Um, you have two different ways you can do this. We would appreciate if you just raise your hand. Um, if you raise your hand, we'll go ahead and unmute your mic. Um, Jason will definitely do that for you. And then you can ask your question live. If you prefer not to be verbal, you can go ahead and type the question in the chat box to staff, and Jason will read that out for you. Are we ready for this, Jason? Yes, we are. Excellent. So Cameron and I are going to go ahead and uh, open our webcams up currently so you can see us as we talk with you uh, during this particular section. All right. Go ahead. Uh, I, there I am. Let's see, I am not seeing these currently. I think I changed my webcam. Let's see, show webcams. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. So we are now going to open up for question and answers. Jason is going to go ahead and, and let us know who is going to be in front of us. And then we'll unmute the mic and get your questions answered. So who do we have first, Jason? All right. First up, we have James. James, are you there? Yes. Hey, welcome to the webinar, James. Thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, got a two-part question. I have a 2005 Kawasaki Vulcan 1600, and uh, I was wondering if it's pertaining to the same thing you was talking to, I believe it was John, about with the, with the exhaust. I've been told that with just an exhaust change only, uh, you don't need a computer program for the air fuel mix. Uh, is that true, or would I have the same issue since it is a Kawasaki, the the V twenty sixteen hundred? Well, the the sixteen hundred, John, didn't have the same issues that the seventeen had, um, and I I don't know what Kawasaki changed or why they had to, but I, I it, it was certainly emissions driven. But what we always recommend is. If it were my bike, I would definitely tune the fuel if you put an aftermarket exhaust system on it, whether it's a Cobra or someone else's. Uh, because you've made the investment in the system, you want to optimize the fuel so you get the most performance possible out of that combination of parts that you have. So if you're just doing a slip-on, you might be able to get away without tuning your fuel. But what you have to remember is, these, especially these larger V-twins, they come from the fact to pass emissions, they are, they are borderline lean coming from the factory. So if you change the air intake or you change the exhaust, it's only going to make those conditions more lean. So you have to be able to add some fuel in there to cool the engine down, but also to get the performance where you want. So I always recommend that you tune your fuel um, to that, but depending on your bike, and everyone is not the same. You know, as much as we like to think that every bike that comes off the assembly line is the same, everyone is different. Everyone's a little unique. So, um, my general comment is, it's always best to tune the fuel. Your bike's going to run cooler. It's going to run better. You're going to accelerate harder. Um, 
but you just have to make that call yourself. If it's if it's running great and it's not doing anything, um, it's not hesitating. Why at cruise when you get on the gas after a cruise and the bike accelerates cleanly, then you might be able to, to get away with it. But most of these bikes are so lean from the factory that you have to do something to add the fuel to it. When you change, again, remember we're talking about these three pieces. You've got air, exhaust, and if you change one of those, you know that's going to put you into more. It's most likely going to put you into more lean situation. Okay. So James, just just to answer your question, it was do I need to? Is it mandatory? Even on completely stock motorcycles, we've done some testing, taking a bike that's completely stock, putting it on the dyno, putting a jet kit or a fuel manager on it. Just doing that to a stock motorcycle with stock air and stock fuel, we show that the results of that are dramatically different, are dramatically improved. And then once again, if we put a, a pipe, whether it be a slip-on or a pool system, on top of that, you increase the air. All of those components work together, but stock or not, whatever you do to your motorcycle, adding either a jet kit or fuel management to that bike is definitely going to increase the rideability of your motorcycle, period. Okay. Uh, like I said, I've, I've just heard that uh, uh, anything after the, well, if you didn't do anything to the to the air, except uh, you know that you you wouldn't have to uh, uh, change change anything. But uh, I see what you're saying. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for joining us, James. Thanks, Thank James. you. Take care. All right. Um, there's actually a follow up to question from to that answer. Um, John is asking if he could do the tuning in his own garage. Yeah, I'm going to say absolutely. I mean, it depends on how deep he wants to get, right? And it depends on what device he's using in order to get that change. If he's putting on, say, a Cobra FI2000 earlier model uh, that has the three pots, he can definitely do the tuning in his own garage. If he's putting on the Cobra FI2000 Power Pro, legitimately, you're going to plug it in and you're going to go for a ride. It's really that simple. There's, you don't want to do it in your garage because you've really got to get you know, some work done on the bike and it will completely adjust any time a second and you're good to roll. If he's using fuel management, such as say a power commander, where you've got to download a map that's going to be as close or as close to what he's running as he can get, it could still benefit from being put on a dynamometer. Um, but for the most part, Whichever system or method he chooses, I personally believe he could definitely do it at home in his own garage. And, and I agree, Kyle, up, up to a certain point. And, and only because of this particular particular bike. I think uh, at the end of the day, all the, all the fuel, tu fuel tuners work really well. You can put a, a, a power commander on and your dealer can dyno it and get it. They can get you really close to where you need to be. Our standard FI will get you really close, and you can you can tune that just like a carburetor. You've got a an uh, air mixture screw, uh, needle and jet position, and a main jet. The Power Pro is probably the best because it's going to look at the fuel and what you do. So you could either one of those solutions would be um, would get you where you need to be. But I think at the end of the day, there's still going to be a, a slight hiccup with the air intake that they're putting back in. So you might have to call um, certainly our customer service guys, and they can walk you through what additional things you might need to do to get that bike to run to its best and fullest potential. But all of them are going to get you really close. Perfect. Thank you, Cameron, for the uh, follow-up on that one. All right. So uh, next question um, is from Randy. Randy, are you there? Hey, Randy, Hello? welcome to the webinar. Hey, Kyle, how are you doing? Good, good. How's it going out there? All right. So um, my, my, my question um, is along the line with what you've been talking about already because uh, I've got an 09 uh, Nomad. 2009. I'm running, I'm running a, a K&N um, uh, form function fitness fitness replacement uh, uh, filter, air filter, Cobra tri -ovals, and a Power Pro uh, controller. Sweet. I get a lot of backfiring um, since I 
when I put the triovals on, I started getting a lot of backfiring, and I put the uh, the Power Pro on about a month ago, uh, and didn't really have any effect. Okay, I can I can address that. Did, have you called our customer service guys about that yet? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'm, when it comes to backfire. Backfiring isn't a fuel issue, and, and this is where I, there's a lot of confusion. Backfiring is where air is being sucked back up through the um, exhaust system back to the exhaust port. And when I earlier in the, the conversation we talked about one of the most important things in the installation of even slip-ons is making sure that that clamp is is clamping down it's, it, and sealing that connection between um, the slip-on and the head pipes. Mm -hmm. If there's any little bit of air that's getting sucked back through there, you're going to get backfiring on that. And on the Nomads, especially the 09s, you know, we really didn't see much of that. So I would say, first of all, you need to kind of re-look at the clamp position. And if you call our customer service, guys on Monday morning and that number for anybody listening is 714-692-8180 um, ask for Andre he'll send you a photo that shows you exactly how that clamp should be positioned because if that's mispositioned even by a little bit you're going to get air that sucks back through there and that's what's going to give you the backfire it's not okay, and, I, I, and, and, the, and the power pro can't can't fix that because it's bringing all this air in on the exhaust side. Okay, I, I've looked at the clamp, but I'll I'll uh, get in touch with Andre tomorrow and uh, see if he can give me that yeah, picture. He'll, he'll walk you through. It's it it really can't be a subtle positioning on where that where that is. But if you're getting backfiring, and this goes for anybody out there, that's not a fuel issue. And and whether it's power commander or our unit or whatever, if you're and you roll off the throttle and it goes bang, that's that's air coming in back in through the exhaust side, not on the fuel side. And that can happen right. it that can happen at the joint where the slip on attaches. It can happen um, it can happen at the head pipe. So for example, if if the two bolts up there at the head pipe or nuts have loosened and it's now getting air that's going back into that into that cavity, you're gonna have that same effect. So making sure you check every single joint where that exhaust pipe is connected um, or slips on, definitely check those things, and, and you should be able to, to get that rectified. Okay, I'll give them a call tomorrow. Thanks. So Randy, how do you how do you like the triovals other than the the backfire issue? <laughs> the backfiring, uh, they're, they're nice. I've I've gotten uh, several comments on them uh, that that not many people have seen them. I I looked at them for a long time. Yeah, there. That that's a great slip-on muffler system. Excellent. Well, yeah. thanks for joining us, Randy. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Great. All right. Next question. I'm going to read this one out loud. It's from Gene. Um, Gene is asking, "What can you do to a tri glide exhaust to make it louder?" To, does he want it on, on a stock exhaust or what he can add to make it louder, an aftermarket exhaust? Um, the way that the question was formed, it may be on a stock exhaust. Well, uh, that's tough on a stock exhaust because you've got the, the header and, and the mufflers have those cores in them. There's not a lot you can do on a stock exhaust on a tri-glide to, uh, to make it louder. The challenge on a tri-glide <coughs> is everybody makes slip-on exhaust that will fit but they will drag because the way the mufflers mount and and if you go through a little dip or a speed bump or something like that they're going to drag and we make a three and a uh, three inch slip-on um, that you could put on there that that um, if you're careful won't drag but if you look i mean it's really tough um, to to put on one of the aftermarket systems because they're they're just if you go in a little dip, you go in your driveway, they're gonna they're gonna hit, they're gonna drag. You notice that stock exhaust has that when it comes off at the end of it, it's really beveled to, and that prevents that. Um, our three-inch mufflers for a for a bagger, um, 
those will work, but you just have to be careful any place where you're kind of going through a dip or going up. And, and those will be a little bit louder, but, you know, the, the trig lights are a little tough just because of that ground clearance issue. Excellent. Thank you, Cameron, for your answer, and thank you, Gene, for that question. All right. Next up is from Tom. Tom, are you there? Oh, yes, I am. Hi. Hey, Tom. Welcome to the webinar. What are you riding tonight, Tom? Hi, Kyle. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you say, Kyle? I didn't hear that. Oh, I said welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what Thank are you, you for today? having me. Thank you for having me. Hi, Cameron. Hi. Uh, I've got the uh, well, first. I'd like to say that um, I've had two complete uh, Cobra systems: one on a Vulcan 2000, and I had that put on by a dealer, and it, uh, I liked it so much, I bought another complete system and installed it myself on a Vulcan 1500 uh, FI. So the, the, the looks, the performance, the sound, everything, I'm uh, um, very, very uh, happy with the systems. I'm currently um, riding a Harley, uh, a Heritage Softail Classic. And um, I, I actually, I had a 2011, a 96 inch, and I bought a, um, uh, the FI 2000, the fuel management. And before I had a chance to install it, I wound up buying a 2012, uh, same thing, but it's a 103. So my question is, is that uh, uh, FI 2000, is that able to be recalibrated or reprogrammed, or can I use it as it is, or do I have an expensive paperweight? You can, um, I have to think for a minute, because what year was your original soft tail? It was a 2011. But it was a 96-inch uh, okay. engine, and now they've got the 103. It came out in, in 12. It'll, it should work fine on the 103. It's I, I can't remember off the top of my head if they changed their connections. I don't think they did. But the unit and the, the baseline programming shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay. Um, but I, before you install it, look yeah. to see what color. There, There's a little... Um, flag on there. There's a there's a connection on when you look in the wiring harness, there's a colored, you know, piece of piece of tape. Mm -hmm. And if it's um, if it's blue, you're good to go. If it's if, blue. Okay. If it's blue, you're good to go. Okay. If it's any other color, then call Andre tomorrow morning, tell him you talk to me tonight. Okay. And what what he will do is send you out a blue unit because we changed the programming considerably from those early FIs to the to later ones and they work so much better. So oh, okay. if you have an orange tag on there or a green tag or there might even be an occasional red one. But if if it's a blue tag, you're good to go. Okay, great. Um, one of the reasons I, I bought it I was I had the eleven out at Sturgis and I, I'm from Wisconsin and well, we're at about 500 feet above sea level, and then when I got out to Sturgis, uh, I was riding, and I got a check engine light. I actually called my dealer, and he talked me through uh, uh, a little process by hitting the uh, 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 turn signals. I guess I came up with some codes, and he said, uh, oh, are you up in the mountains? I said, you, well, you nailed it. What, what, what did the code show? He says, you're running rich, and that was one reason I bought the uh, fuel commander. I'm, I'm, I was assuming that that would... Uh, uh, adjust for some of that richness? Would that help in high altitude situations? Yes. Now okay. the, stock, the stock ECU will adjust for altitude up to a certain point. Okay. But what the, what the Power Pro does, and, and it's important for everyone to remember, the Power Pro, when it works, you have to be accelerated. So okay. it's just like a dyno. If you're not accelerating on a dyno, a dyno's not doing you any good other than burning fuel and putting load on your engine. So if you're accelerating, it's going to go, I need, to, I need less fuel, I need more air. So it's going to take fuel away while you're accelerating, so if you're in the mountains. And then when you get back to Wisconsin, where in Wisconsin are you? Uh, Lake Geneva area. Oh, it's, uh, that's, that's such a horrible little place to have to live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, for about two or three months of the year, uh, Wisconsin's a paradise as far as for, for bikes. Uh, I'm just oh. all over the state, but uh, we suffer. I love Madison. Uh, Madison's one of my favorite cities to visit every year. It's really beautiful. Do. 
but in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. I it's the Power Pro. I think I named it some other name. So that's all right. Uh, but yeah, it it you shouldn't have any issues from going from uh, your ninety six inch to the one hundred three. You should be able to use that unit just fine. But but again, before you put it on, just check the. Uh, the color tag, and if it's a blue, go ahead and give it a go. If it's orange or something, call Andre tomorrow morning, and they'll get you squared away with the latest version of that. Great. Well, thank you, Cameron. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Thank Absolutely. You, Thanks for joining us, and you have a good evening. Hey, thank uh, Cameron, you. thank you for uh, the help with that guy. It's awesome. Oh, sure. Sure. Great. All right. Next question is from Mike. Hey, Mike, are you there? Mike, are you there? Yeah. Hey, Mike, welcome to the webinar. Thanks for joining us. I've got a question. I have a 94 Gold Wing 1500A Aspicade trike. And it, 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 it has what looks like car mufflers on it, I guess. I don't know. Is there, is there any good mufflers that Kobe makes to put on that? Well, we haven't made mufflers for that, that bike for a long time. Okay. Uh, uh, we made some original, you know, boy, it's been a long, long time. I don't think we have anything that would fit that. Uh, uh, I think the only guy who's still doing stuff for that is actually, um, I'm trying to think, this, uh, the guy that does the Torque Master. Okay. We haven't done business with him in a while, but I believe he still does pipes for your bike, so... Take a look at Torque Master. Go ahead and Google it, and then give him a call, and he should be able to help you out. Okay. I appreciate that. Awesome. Hey, thank you for joining us. Yep. All right. Take care. Thank you. Hey, Kyle, my, Kyle, my wife just handed me a martini. Can I can I take a sip of that? Yeah, have it. Have at it. All right. Have at it. Evening, guys. Got to thank my wife for this. Cheers. <laughs> All right. A Sunday night martini. That sounds, sounds good. fantastic. All right, so the next question is currently from Joe. Joe, are you there? Hi. Hey, Guys, Joe, welcome you? to the webinar. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's awesome. I enjoy these uh, Sunday nights uh, immensely. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Cameron if Cobra makes a muffler, a slip-on muffler, for a 2008 Yamaha Royal Star Tour Deluxe. I'm no. calling from Canada. For the Royal Star, you know, Royal Star, I don't think we make anything for that. I don't think we make anything anymore. I'm gonna. No, I'm gonna I don't think show. you do either. But I wanted to be sure. <laughs> I don't know why you make. Do you make them for the venture? No. You know, we might have back in the day. No, you don't. We might have back in the day. No, not that's a Royal Star. You know okay. what? Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That was that was kind of a fun motorcycle, and we have we have this total custom Royal Star in our lobby. That's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. That was done well, so well. I tell you, I have a lot of fun on it. I really enjoy the bike, and I get a lot of compliments about the bike. There's not a lot of them around, really, and uh, but it's so much fun. And but I would like. A little more power. There's no doubt about it. When you get, the, I have stock mufflers on now, and it's the quietest bike in Canada. <laughs> well, I think you, to get more power, you can't hear me. You can't hear me coming. If you put you the venture motor, the v to sneak right up on you. If you put the V Max motor in there, you'll get all the power you need. They took all the power out when they made the the V Star. Yeah. But anyway, guys, thanks so much, and I, and I am enjoying the evening. Thanks. Hey, thanks for joining us. Take care. Sure. Hey, thanks for joining us. Take care. Yeah. That was fun. All right. Great. Um, next question is going to be from John. John, are you there? John, see? Hey, John, are you out there? All right. All right. If you want uh, to get back to your computer and go ahead and raise your hand again, we'll definitely get to you. Who's next, Jason? All right. Next up will be James. James, are you there? Hello. Oh, hey, right, James. Welcome to the webinar. How are you? Hey. 
Hey, thank you, Kyle and Cameron. I'm back with another question. Back to the 1600 Vulcan in 2005, Cameron. Uh, first, do they make a slip-on for that one? And second, uh, what would be better for that particular installation, a, a slip-on or a, a full, a full, a full set all the way to the to the head? Uh, I'm, I'm checking right at the moment. So the 1600.05? Yes, sir. It's uh, fuel injected. I think we only made full systems for that. We made a, a couple of speedster systems, and Kyle, if my memory is faulty, you know, let me know. But I think that's we've made kind of we didn't do slip-ons for that for that particular bike. The and speedsters are the speedsters are fantastic bikes. You've done uh, yeah. several installations of those, and and the end user has always been happy with that bike for sure. Okay, is that a very loud? I'm not looking for something that's going to deafen every all the neighbors when I when I come in at night, but uh, uh, a, a little bit different sound, uh, but I don't, I don't know exactly. I guess I could go online and maybe somebody yeah. got something on YouTube. Yeah, and you can go to our website and, and hear them. They are going to be louder than stock, but one of the, one of the great benefits of uh, a Cobra Speedster system is because it has the crossover in there. That crossover also takes away some of the real sharp, harsh uh, sound that you get from uh, kind of a shotgun style system. So that, that crossover that's built into that knocks some of those harsh edges off. It's still going to be noticeably louder than stock. So if you're really concerned about that, then you might want to listen to it on the website or, or go on the, the forums. But it's a great sounding system. Saves a lot of weight and you'll get uh, quite a bit more performance out of those too. Okay, and that's called the, the Speedster? Is that the only one you make uh, for that uh, 1600? I think so, and, and we, you could get it in the Speedster slash down or a Speedster, we call it a short model, where it's just kind of straight cut on the end. Mm -hmm. The billet tips and all the other stuff that comes with it. But it's a nice, it's a really nice system. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Excellent. Sure. Thanks, James. Great. All right. Next question is going to be from Frank. Hey, Frank, are you there? Uh, yeah. Hey, Frank, welcome to, welcome to the webinar. What can we do for you tonight? Hey, I got a 99 Shadow Arrow 1100 with Cobra uh, exhaust on it already. And um, going up my driveway, I guess I scraped the front cover a few times. I was just wondering if that's a replaceable part. Um, boy, that's not a question I've heard for that. I've heard a lot of questions about that particular <laughs> pipe, but not on that heat shield. So let me just take a look. So Shadow 1100, and it was a 99? Mm-hmm. Let's just take a look. So that's a fun bike. That's actually uh, the motorcycle that started Cruiser Customizing. So For real? Pretty amazing. Yeah, Uwe had a, uh, an arrow himself. And uh, he got together with uh, another arrow rider, and they started cruiser customizing. So guys who rode arrows could find all of the aftermarket parts that were available for the arrow because they were not very visible or uh, accessible at that time, at that period of time. And then yeah. we rolled out to all Hondas, then all the Yamahas, and now we are what we are today. So pretty, pretty significant make model for uh, cruiser customizing. Yeah, I know so, uh, you guys you have a lot of parts for them. Mm -hmm. so you were hitting the front heat shield or the the front head pipe yeah the front heat shield um is is scraped and it's starting to rust and which you know which pipes you had uh, the, I bought the, the drag the, pipes I, or the um they they have a slash cut in the in the back but I don't really know for sure what type they are I bought the bike used and the the pipes were already on there yeah that's um you probably have to, you know, I think, I, you know, we could probably get you a new heat, front heat shield on that one. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know how quickly we could do it because, you know, it's kind of an older bike, but I would say call call the same phone number I gave, the 714-692-8180, and ask for either Mike or Andre. 
and they could let you know when we'd have one available that you could you could uh, replace that one with. Okay, give me that number again. It's seven one four uh -huh. six nine two eight one eight zero. Ask for Mike or Andre. Right. And again, when you when you do that, tell them you talk to me. Tell them you talk to Cameron on the webinar, and then uh, they'll they'll take care of you if if we can. And mo the, either one will let you know um, if we have a heat shield, or if not, when the next time we might be uh, making those again. Okay. And Frank, if uh, if that doesn't work out, if if Cobra isn't able to supply a heat shield. Contact me directly, and uh, we'll work on getting you a set of pipes that will uh, be a perfect replacement for those. All right. Sounds like a plan. Excellent. Hey, thanks for tuning in, Frank. You take care. Thank you. All right, Jason, who do we have next? All right. Next up is Dimitri. Dimitri, are you there? I am. Hey, Dimitri. Thanks for joining us. What can we do for you tonight? Um, so uh, today it was raining in Philadelphia, and I installed... Uh, uh, a set of uh, a, a different company's uh, straight shot exhaust on my uh, 750 Arrow, and boy are they loud! And I was uh, so my question really is: the, the quiet baffles. Uh, what is three or four decibels in the real world? Uh, because uh, they are a little too loud for comfort, uh, as I found out today. Okay, well, so go ahead, Cameron. That, you know, Dimitri, that's a tough one to answer because, uh, you know, a, a couple of decibels does, it, it just depends. Are they too loud at idle? Are they too loud when you're on the gas? Or are they just too loud in general? Um, well, I, I, but, didn't get a chance, I didn't get a chance to ride that much because it was raining all day. Um, okay. I, they sound okay at idle, uh, but... It, it, you know, I just crack the gas a little bit, and they roar. And my concern is, what happens when uh, I'm at, you know, five or six thousand RPM continuously? And um, so, you know, that's where that's where I, you know, I I'm going to try them because I really like the exhaust. But uh, I, I, you know, I'm hoping that, um, and. You know, if if there's a middle ground between stock and what I have right now, I think I, I could be comfortable with that. Yeah, there definitely is. And real quick before we move on, um, quiet baffles are available for that pipe. Uh, both Vance and Hines and Cobra both make quiet baffles for their motorcycles and uh, or for their pipes. Essentially, what happens is the standard baffle that's in both pipes is a straight through baffle that has some louvers in it. The Quiet baffle is going to have basically diversions within the pipe. So go ahead and go to our YouTube channel. Yeah, like that, five, 50, 50, 10. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was signing to my wife. I'm sorry, guys. Nice. Sorry. Is it dinner time? <laughs> no, she was just wondering. Gotcha. <laughs> so real, real quick, so the, the quiet baffle um, diverts air. If you go ahead and take a look at our YouTube channel, um, or any of our baffle pages, you're going to see a YouTube video that explains each of the quiet baffles and kind of how they function and why they lower the tone. Um, I actually have a set of quiet baffles in uh, the pipes I have in my VTX, and it does, I, I, don't, I can't use the word dramatically, reduce the sound, but what it does, it knocks off all of the higher pitches and makes it more of a low rumble. So from personal experience, I'd probably recommend taking a look at the quiet baffles, um, installing those into the pipes, and I think that you'll be happy with the outcome. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. One, one quick follow-up. If I go with the quiet baffles and you mentioned rejetting, should I stick to a stage one rejet because obviously they're more restrictive than the straight through baffles? My particular setup, I went ahead and jetted the motorcycle for aftermarket air kit and a full system exhaust with baffles. Um, I did not have to go in and rejet further when I installed the quiet baffles, if that answers the question. Well, there's, a, there's another thing, Kyle, and you have to dig for it, but almost all jet kits are, are 
you know, there are other companies that make them, but Dynajet makes most of the jet kits. The Cobra jet kits that you buy, you could buy a Cobra jet kit for your bike, but they're designed by Dynajet. Mm -hmm. And you have to dig around on the website, but Dynajet has this really great uh, tuning guide for carburetors and what goes on. And when you get that, and again, you have to <laughs> dig around on the website to find it, but if you can, that that can, it describes how um, when you're riding, what conditions you're feeling, what you need to do, and what you need to adjust. So I would say, see if you can find that tuning guide, and it's, it's you know, it's old, it's, it's dated material, and everybody's moved to the fuel injection stuff, but there's this, they have this real, it's a really, really good uh, tuning tool, and it's, and it's written in a real world way. So if you ride when you do this, what happens? If you do this, what happens? So that can be a really helpful tool to help you determine what you need to do with your uh, with your jet kit to get your motorcycle run properly. But it's really a wonderful document. But it the last time I, I found it, it was hard. It's hard to find, but when you get it, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, I did a fuel management uh, tip of the week a couple weeks ago that I used the DinoJet stuff and. Uh, Patrick and I had a discussion on jet kits in general and carburation and how that works. And I actually have a copy of that document that uh, Cameron's talking about. So shoot me an email asking for the document, and I'll just go ahead and shoot you the PDF. It's really simple. That's better than trying to find it on the website. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll Thanks go ahead and take guys. questions for just a few more minutes. Thanks for joining us again. And uh, uh, Dimitri, hope we answered the question there. Um, so we'll answer questions for another five minutes or so here that I'll give us about an hour and a half of the webinar. So Jason, if you could uh, pull up the most prominent ones, that would be great. And if your question didn't get answered tonight, go ahead and shoot me an email, kyle at cruisercustomizing.com, and I'll make sure that answer gets to you within 24 hours. What do you have next, Jason? All right, great. We do have a lot of questions here, so um, if you kind of have to bear with us, um, we can't answer every single like, question that you guys have. But um, here's one from Steve. Hey, Steve, are you there? If you're talking to me, yes. Yes, yes, hey. I am. Hey, Steve, welcome. What would we you do for you tonight? Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. Hey, I just put, I just had the Cobra Speedster Extra Longs put on my V-Star 1300, and I uh, put the IF-2000 on it and the uh, K&N uh, air filter. It runs great. It, I think it may be a little loud for my taste. Um, Although it's not it's not bad on the highway, but I'm wondering if I put the quiet baffles in there, will that uh, affect the performance? It won't affect the performance that much. I mean, you might lose a little bit, but if you're not riding, if you're not shifting at six thousand five hundred thousand RPM, five thousand five hundred RPM, you're not going to notice that. So it's going to take some of the edge off and going to take some of the volume off. For you. You won't really notice anything on at low end. If you put it on a dyno, you might see your half horsepower or less or something. But not anything that you would feel on the road. So the low end wouldn't really have uh, an effect at all? No, no. Not that you would feel. Okay. That's all I need to know because I think I'm going to get those. It's, it's a great pipe, by the way. I, I love them. That's Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You take care. Sure. Next up, Jason. All right, great. Um, we, have, we have a question here for Patricia. Patricia, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, Patricia, thanks for joining us. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Excellent. I am calling, or calling in, or talking in, whatever you want to call it, to find out what your suggestion is. I have an O3 V-Star 1100 that I ride, and I am wondering what you would suggest would be the best exhaust system for it. Um, right now I'm looking at putting the K&N hypercharger intake on it. What would be the best exhaust system to attach to that for not having a cackle but a good rumble sound? Well, you mean what would be the best Cobra system? Okay, on. sure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and do I need to do a full system or can I do slip-ons to get a um, good rumble? My husband rides a Harley and he teases me all the time. 
We'll put him on the line. We'll we'll Kyle will drive <laughs> over there and talk to him. <laughs> uh, well, Patricia, I don't think I can answer that question. I can't tell you what the best exhaust system to put on there. We make a number of exhaust systems to do, but I will tell you this: the guys at the V Star 1100 forum are rabid enthusiasts. They they these guys send more people to our website than anybody. Um, okay. They're engaged. They love the bike. So, you know, you could. I would say, first of all, you could go on and and talk to any of those guys or or see what they're doing, um, and and that would be a good way. Now, we also we make uh, a two into one system that's great. We make the full speedster line that's great for those things. I wouldn't recommend the dragsters. They look great, but they don't give you the performance, and I don't think they give you the sound that you're that you're looking for. But okay. it's it's really tough for me to say this would be the best system for your bike. If you're looking for the best performance, then it would be one of our speedsters or the two into one. But I would okay. say go to the V Star eleven hundred forum. Those guys are animals. I mean they're 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 <laughs> so into those bikes and and they love them and they've done everything they possibly can. So if I were you, I'd go to them and go, "What's the best Cobra system to put on my to put on my bike?" <laughs> now, Patricia, I would I would say I would give you a or slight, Kyle. <laughs> I would give you a slightly different answer. My answer would be, take a look at the Cobra exhaust pipes that are available, and choose the one that aesthetically and um, audio audibly uh, fits your requirements. I mean, they all look a little bit different. They've all got their own style, and just take a look at the one that looks the best, click the sound file, listen to that pipe, and see if it's exactly what you're looking for. Because some, some of the ones that you might like the look of the best, you're not going to care for the sound for. You may not care for the sound. The ones that sound the best, you may not care for the look. So take a look at the pipe. I mean, any of the cover pipes that you choose are going to give you more performance than you're probably ever going to need to use. So I would just say choose the one that you like the looks of the best and that you think sounds the, the best. ones I've been looking at the most are the Speedster Slash Cuts. Oh, that's a great pipe for that one. Fantastic Absolutely pipe. Great. We've got the installation video of that on a uh, 1300. Uh, the installation is pretty much the same as uh, on your bike. So, yeah, you should be good to go on that one. All right. Well, thank you. And don't let your husband give you any crap on that deal either. <laughs> He already drilled my baffles out and, and put in replacements, so he was trying, but, yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Take care. Bye. All right. Great. Um, let's see. Kevin, are you there? Kevin F., I would say. <laughs> There's like two Kevins to raise their hand, but hey, are Kevin, you there, Kevin? You out there? Kevin, welcome to the uh, Cobra and Cruiser Customizing Exhaust webinar. How you doing? All right. Looks like he's, he's taking the siesta. He followed Cameron's example and went to get himself a cold drink. <laughs> Who's next out there, Jason? All right. Um, how about Richard? Richard, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Richard, welcome to the webinar. How are you doing tonight? Good, and yourself? Fantastic. I have a uh, 2011 uh, Kawasaki Vaccaro. Okay. And I'm understanding it's a 1700. In my understanding, they're having tuning problems with those if you put pipes on. It's basically the same engine that we talked about earlier. And uh, it's it's not so much tuning problems, but tuning challenges. It's it. It's, uh, it takes a little more work. You can, you can put aftermarket systems on. You can certainly put any Cobra systems on. But you are going to have to tune your fuel. And, and that becomes a little more involved with that particular engine uh, combination. Okay. So but it's, it's doable. And you can, you know, with that, with that particular motorcycle, you can unleash some, some power with that. You get a great sound with the aftermarket systems. And that, and that, the Vaccaro version of that really begs for it, screams for it, because it's all blacked out. It's kind of hot rodding looking. So, um, getting the sound to match the style of that thing is really a cool thing to do. 
would you recommend a uh, slip-on or a full system? Um, it it kind of depends. That's sort of what we've been talking about all night. You know, with a yeah. with a slip-on, you you spend a little bit less, but you don't reach the full performance potential that 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 motor can do. With a full system, you can you can kind of unleash a lot more horsepower. But the tuning challenges become a little a little greater with that too. So it just depends kind of on how you want to go. But if, if you're looking for better sound and nicer looking muffler, then you know that's that's easily done. So you can't accomplish this by putting the Power Pro on, as far as the tuning part. It just depends on the particular bike. For the most part, um, with the Power Pro, it takes care of it. But some of the bikes continue to have. Uh, uh, with that particular engine, you get a lot of backfiring that that's ex that exists in the stock bike, but you don't hear it because of the the sound deadening qualities. Okay. And, it, and again, it comes because of the way that Kawasaki is injecting cold, fresh air back into the uh, um, exhaust pipe. So there are things you have to do to kind of um, fix that part of it. Now, would that be something I'd have to take the dealer to do, or no? You could call our guys. You okay. can call our guys and they can kind of help you walk you through that. But it's like we've been saying earlier, there are some motorcycles that are designed certain ways and the manufacturer have done things the way that they've designed it to pass emissions um, that require you to do something more than just bolting on or adding a, a Power Pro tuner or an FI tuner or a Power Commander. You have to do a couple of other steps to get the bikes to perform properly. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Sure. Hey, thanks for joining us, Richard. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we've reached the, we've reached the hour and a half mark here. It's now 6.30 here in California, and we're going to have to close this session of the Cobra and Cruise Customizing Exhaust webinar. Cameron, thank you so much for taking this Sunday sure evening to uh, spend some time with us and talk about exhaust pipes and motorcycle performance. Thanks. Thanks, guys, and thanks for everybody for tuning in. And uh, Thanks for your support for, um, for our products and for Cruiser Customizing. These guys have been one of our, our great partners uh, from the very, very beginning. So we're thrilled to be a part of it. So if you're looking forward to that discount coupon code, it's COB24. Call it code for Cobra, of course, COB24. And that will get you your Cruiser Customizing t-shirt and a $30 gift certificate if the order is over $199. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Jason, for uh, right. handling the questions behind thanks the scenes. Everybody. And we will see you guys next time. Take care.